All right, so this morning I got a, uh, this is a, a W204, I think it's a 2013 or 14. And uh, this one was vandalized, another vandalized switch. I think I had a video for a W210 that was also vandalized. So they couldn't start the car. Uh, I don't know what they tried to do here, but uh, it looks like there may have been some damage to the coil here. So I'm gonna see if I can read any data from this one. I'll try via infrared first, which I'm not, uh, well, I'm not feeling hopeful about getting it via infrared, but I am feeling hopeful of getting the information via OBD in the back. Okay, so I got the key, I got the EIS, and I do have the computer. I'm just not gonna use it yet until I, uh, if, if I can't get data from this one, then I will have to build a new EIS from the computer data and the key data. <clears throat> All right, so let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is hook this up to BVDI and we're gonna see what kind of info we can get from it. All right, so we're gonna start with uh, BVDI here and we've got it hooked up. We're going to press the button and see if we can get data from it. Here we go. Perfect, okay, so we're able to get data via OBD2. Um, let's see if we can read this key. All right, so I'm switching to the screen so you can see the test that just pops up. I'm going to stick the key in the ignition switch and see if we can read anything. All right, key's in. So we've got mechanical status, but we've got no CAN status. Okay, so this is not reading via infrared. We usually use infrared to get the key password, but that's not gonna work because we don't have an IR connection on this switch because it's damaged. So um, we're gonna save this without the key password and we're gonna make up a new key password later. So first thing I'm gonna do is uh, save this data. Okay, so we have all the FPS data that we need here. So this is the original. I'm just gonna unplug this one. I've already got the FDS data from this one. And let's plug in the donor switch. And I already have the data from this one. So I'm going to be able to renew it and let's get started with the uh, first thing you've got to do is uh, get the key password from this, which I've already done. And now I'm just going to renew this one, basically virginize it so that I can transfer the information from the original to this donor switch. Let's do that with BBDI right now. All right, so at VBDI, we're going to read the donor switch. And I'm gonna load the data that I got from it. Okay, I just loaded the data. Now we have the key password here. I'm gonna get the erase password next. Okay, now we've got the erase password. Uh, we've got the key password. Now we can renew this EIS. So to renew it, okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna take our infrared key and on BBDI, we're gonna press IR and we're gonna hit renew EIS. And it's gonna ask me to insert this IR adapter. Okay. So let me do that now. We've got it erased. It says erasing EIS success. Okay. So now this is erased. 
Let's go back to OBD. Let's read it. And we can see now that it's not activated any longer. Okay. So now we're going to load data from the original. We just saved it. Let's go find that data. I'm going to navigate to the data where I saved it. And we're going to click on it. And as you can see, we're missing the key password because we were not able to get it. We were not able to get the key password because the IR function is destroyed. So um, we're going to use the key password from the donor switch. Let's navigate to the donor switch folder. I, I, uh, I copied this key password when I retrieved it from the donor switch earlier. Okay. Okay, so there's the key password from the donor switch. It's in place now. And I'm going to select write EIS data. And it's writing the data now. All right, we're done. Now I'm going to read via OBD and see if the VIN stays the same. Here's the VIN. Let's keep an eye on those last four digits, 2749. Let's read it. And it did. Okay, so it wrote the VIN. We wrote all of the key tracks. We wrote the special key. And this one is now cloned. It's not activated yet until we put the key in. Okay, so now in order to activate it, we need to stick the key in and uh, turn it to position 3, which is the starting car position, uh, circuit 50. All right, so next I'm going to program a key and program an ESL emulator. Uh, I'm not going to record that portion. There's other videos uh, where I show you how to make a key and how to make an emulator. Uh, this one is just cloning this 204 switch. So I'm going to program a key and program an emulator, and then we're going to come back and see if it's working. Okay, so here it is. This is a new key just programmed to this EIS, the donor EIS. And this is the emulator that I'm just using temporarily uh, so that we can activate this, and we're going to check to see if it works. So um, here we go. Okay, so here we go. We have our screen up. This is the uh, key test window. I'm going to stick the key in the ignition switch now, and we should see we should see this pop up on the working key window. Okay, it's in, and we see now that we have CAN status. Okay. Now let me turn the key to position one. And we can see now that we have a check on circuit 15R. Two checks, uh, one for mechanical status and one for CAN status. And then we'll do position two. And now we've got two checks on 15, that's circuit 15. Okay. And then the last circuit, that's the starter circuit. We're gonna turn this. And we've got two checks on circuit 50. So this car is going to start. So we've got a new key and a new EIS to replace uh, my customer's original EIS that was vandalized. They tried to steal it. They couldn't steal it, fortunately. Um, the EIS technology is, is pretty good. Uh, it's hard to get by, hard to get past. So I'm all done with this one. I'm going to call my customer, give them the good news, and um, we're on to the next one.